Welcome to this informational tutorial. The point is to analyze the George Zimmerman's legal case from a PR point of view. Indeed, for this very case, social media played a decisive part on the way Zimmerman's defense was organized. Why did they choose to bring the case online? What were the key messages? Under the crisis communication theories, it's about understanding the lesson learned from this particular case. First, let's quickly go back to the facts. The starting point of the crisis occurred in February 2020 in Sanford, Florida. George Timmerman, who was neighborhood watch captain, called 911 to report a suspicious person in his neighborhood. This person was Trevor Martin, a 17-year-old African-American high school student who was visiting her father. Despite the instruction not to approach the person, Zimmerman and Martin started to fight. Moments later, neighbors report hearing gunfire. Zimmerman was bleeding from the nose and from the back of his head. He admitted to a police official that he shot Martin, claiming it was self-defense. The shooting went viral, gaining national attention mainly because of the use of an online petition and Twitter by the boy's parents and supporters who pushed for Zimmerman's arrest. They wanted the shooting of their son to serve as an example of discrimination against black people, and so the case became about race struggle. It was also an example against tenure ground laws which authorizes a person to protect and defend his life against threat or perceived threat in some states of the United States. Now that facts have been reviewed, let's now focus on how the defense of George Zimmerman organized itself. Before implementing a strategy, the Zimmerman team must have conducted a situation analysis. The first step is about finding prodromes. Two of them were past events with some similarities. The O.J. Simpson murder trial was a previous case that emphasized race struggle. It occurred in 1995 in California. It also beneficiated from a wide media coverage. About the importance of social media, in trial, the case that Time magazine called the social media trial of the century occurred in Florida from 2005 to 2008. During the trial of Casey Anthony, who was found not guilty for the murder of a two-year-old daughter, the latest and most reliable news on the trial came from the local judicial court Twitter account. On both sides, supporters, but especially opponents, used Twitter and Facebook in a tremendous way to come on the ongoing trial. Anticipating the fact that the trial shall be abundantly discussed online, Zimmerman's defense team decided to proactively initiate action by creating a strong presence in the social media. To better organize its strategy, Zimmerman's team first had to figure who are its publics. The stakeholder salient theory, developed by Freeman in 1984, provides theme with a matrix that allows a ranking from 7 to 1 to the involving stakeholders according to the power, the legitimacy and the urgency they have in the case. The first public is their counterpart, the Martins family and their lawyer. They have legitimacy due to the fact that their son died and they also have urgency to be heard. Their lawyer brings them the last attribute which is power because his statement in court are to convince the jury of the guiltiness of Dimmerman. The they are definitive stakeholders. They need the most intention. Last but not least, public opinion is made of supporters and detractors. They have the power to influence the court through a huge mobilization. They also have a huge urgency to hurt because the importance they attach to the outcome of the trial is high. Then the legitimacy is only medium that they are not directly involved in the case. So, as a conclusion of the stakeholder analysis, Zimmerman should first focus on their opponent, then on the public opinion. The first one that were already online in social media is the place where the second one speaks and want to be heard. That way, we can easily understand why Zimmerman's team went online. This is where a huge part of the trial would take place. To optimize their communication, the demandsman's team had to state the problem they are dealing with before finding a general goal and the means to achieve it. Following the process of a communication plan, here is the problem statement. It summarizes the issue without blaming or proposing solution. It's interesting to notice that following the apologia theory developed by William Benoit in 1995, the team used the reduction of offensiveness strategy by putting the case in the frame of a classic legal case. The whole point was to avoid the frame of a race struggle lawsuit through which the public opinion was to analyze the facts. The overall goal was about reframing. To achieve that goal, four objectives were set. First, prevent misperception of the amendments having done nothing but save him to stay away from racist accusation. Then, transfer information to all the publics from all over the US and even outside to prevent misleading media coverage. In the hope of changing their opinion towards the case, this is the third objective. 
then gather the most information from the audiences online to sharpen their focus on what's important for the people. This like bond is also fundamental. By monitoring activity online, the defense team might be able to anticipate the concert of the jury and to be better prepared to defense arguments. Question posted on Twitter about Zimmerman's account on the shooting of the police investigation could well be questioned that future jurors raise. The strategies serve the objectives. The stakeholder analysis and the communication plan description have led us to the question regarding the use of social media. Once they decided to bring the case online, the defense team created a logo to emphasize ethos to gain credibility, trust. We can find it on all the pages of the defense on Twitter and Facebook and the dedica dedicated website and on their blog. To justify the online presence of his team, the very attorney of Dimmermans, Mark O'Mara, wrote a manifesto on their dedicated website that detailed all the reasons why they use social media. The manifesto is called Why Social Media for George Zimmerman and he identified seven objectives for the site, including, I quote, disputing misinformation and discouraging speculation. The next day he posted on an article titled Social Media is an Intermediary between the organization and its publics. The attorney stands here as a practitioner that tries to achieve a dialogue, not a monologue. It's a perfect match with the excellent theory developed by James E. Cronin in 1992. The two-way symmetric model is the best strategy to implement according to the author. And social media, according to O'Mara, is the best modern way to achieve this mutual interesting model. He talks about our discussion, online conversation, and he also says, by maintaining a presence online, we provide a place for people to express their opinion in a place where they feel it is being heard. The use of the Model 4 is a semi-failure. Indeed, the team succeeded in gathering information about the case and it probably helped to build a solid defense, but the Facebook page had to be shut down due to the massive flow of threats and harmful comments online. One point Omara underlined in his manifesto is the will to avoid rumors. Because they can be hurtful and lead to misjudgment, the online presence is here to monitor them, analyze them, and then count on them following the Daniel Journal recommendations. Disputing information is clearly a way to avoid what George Kebner called the mediated reality. Because they are eager to headlines, media sometimes lead to public opinion towards a misreception of reality. To avoid such a situation, O'Hara decided to get rid of the intermediary. Social media is the way to transfer information directly from them to the receiver, the public opinion. He wrote, We began posting public documents associated with the case. We feel that providing these documents directly on our website allows interested parties to access the information without the filter of the media. Finally, the possibility to gather information through the analysis of the public opinion views online made Homara give a new definition of his very occupation. Our journey might have publicity attributes. They will move towards an hybrid transition between the two roles. Of course, they'll have to comply with the law by not disclosing evidence online but there to analyze the opinion and taste of social media users, which is an important tool for advertiser, retailer, or other consumer specialist. According to a Florida jury consultant, Amy Singer, this is a potential treasure trove. Now let's move on to the outcome assessment. Gallup poll found that nearly three-fourths of black believed that racial bias was a major factor in the shouting. Non-black were more reticent. Only 11% believed that Zimmerman was guilty. While most say that the case was unclear, Gallup draws a direct parallel between this racial divide and the one following the Simpson trial in 1995, so obviously Zimmerman's team did not succeed in avoiding a race struggle-based lawsuit. The law is always a little bit behind, or sometimes a lot behind, the rest of the culture. Social media broaden horizons, for example, it has become more common practice to vet the accounts of witnesses at the post may expose particular biases, motives or contradiction in their testimony. According to Eric Dizenhall, a crisis communication specialist, if you know that the case is being publicly debated, if there is any chance of convincing the public that your client is innocent, you're going to try to using real facts and plausible narratives. Even if Omara succeeded in making his client fee, the public opinion court has not decided yet. One can win in court, but lose in court of public opinion. The movement Black Lives Matter began with the use of the hashtag, hashtag Black Lives Matter, on social media after the acquittal of George Zimmerman. It received French impetus from the 2014 death of two American Americans, Michael Brown and Eric Garner. These are the references that I use. Thank you for watching.